Dr. Emily Harris was a renowned endocrinologist at St. Joseph's Hospital, known for her expertise in treating patients with diabetes. She had dedicated her career to helping those who suffered from this chronic condition, and her compassionate care had earned her a reputation as one of the best in the field. However, one fateful day, a series of unfortunate events would lead to a tragic outcome that would shake the medical community to its core. It was a busy morning at the hospital, and Dr. Harris was in high demand. She had just finished a complicated case and was rushing to her next patient, Mr. Johnson, a middle-aged man with uncontrolled diabetes. Mr. Johnson had been struggling to manage his blood sugar levels despite multiple medication adjustments, and Dr. Harris was determined to find a solution. As Dr. Harris reviewed Mr. Johnson's medical records, she realized that his insulin dosage needed to be increased to better control his glucose levels. However, due to a clerical error by the nurse, the insulin vial that was prepared for Dr. Harris contained a concentration that was 10 times higher than what she had prescribed. Unaware of the error, she proceeded to administer the high-dose insulin to Mr. Johnson. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas that regulates glucose metabolism in the body. It helps cells absorb glucose from the bloodstream, lowering blood sugar levels. However, when administered in excessive amounts, insulin can cause hypoglycemia, a condition characterized by dangerously low blood sugar levels. Mr. Johnson's blood sugar levels plummeted rapidly, and he developed hypoglycemia within minutes of receiving the high-dose insulin. Hypoglycemia can cause a variety of symptoms, including confusion, weakness, dizziness, and difficulty speaking. In severe cases, it can lead to loss of consciousness, seizures, and even death. Dr. Harris was soon alerted to Mr. Johnson's deteriorating condition, and she rushed to his bedside. She immediately recognized the signs of hypoglycemia and initiated emergency measures to stabilize his blood sugar levels. She administered intravenous dextrose, a form of glucose, to raise his blood sugar levels quickly. However, the high dose of insulin had already caused a significant imbalance in his glucose and potassium levels. Glucose is a type of sugar that serves as the primary source of energy for the body. Potassium is an electrolyte that plays a crucial role in maintaining normal heart and muscle function. When insulin levels are too high, as in Mr. Johnson's case, it can cause glucose and potassium to move into cells, leading to a rapid decrease in their levels in the bloodstream. Dr. Harris also ordered blood tests to monitor Mr. Johnson's electrolyte levels. The results showed a dangerous drop in his potassium levels, a condition known as hypokalemia. Potassium is crucial for maintaining normal electrical activity in the heart, and a deficiency can lead to abnormal heart rhythms, or arrhythmias. Arrhythmia is a term used to describe an irregular heartbeat. The heart has a complex electrical system that controls its rhythm, and any disruption in this system can result in arrhythmias. There are various types of arrhythmias, including bradycardia or slow heart rate, tachycardia or fast heart rate, and ventricular fibrillation, a life-threatening arrhythmia where the heart's lower chambers quiver instead of pumping blood. Dr. Harris recognized the severity of Mr. Johnson's condition and immediately ordered aggressive potassium replacement therapy. She also consulted with a cardiologist to manage the arrhythmia. However, despite their best efforts, Mr. Johnson's condition continued to deteriorate rapidly. As the hours passed, Mr. Johnson's heart began to show signs of severe strain. Dr. Harris and her team worked tirelessly to stabilize Mr. Johnson's condition. They administered medications to correct his potassium levels, closely monitored his heart rhythm, and provided supportive care. However, the high dose of insulin had caused significant damage to his body, and his condition continued to worsen. The imbalance in Mr. Johnson's glucose and potassium levels had put tremendous stress on his heart. The arrhythmias were further compounded by the hypoglycemia caused by the excessive insulin. The heart, which relies on a constant supply of glucose for energy, was struggling to function properly. Dr. Harris consulted with other specialists, and they collectively decided to initiate continuous renal replacement therapy CRRT, to manage Mr. Johnson's electrolyte imbalances. CRRT is a form of dialysis that uses a machine to filter waste products and excess fluids from the blood. It is often used in critically ill patients to help maintain electrolyte balance and fluid status. However, despite the aggressive treatment, Mr. Johnson's condition continued to deteriorate. As the hours turned into days, Mr. Johnson's heart became increasingly unstable. He developed ventricular fibrillation, a life-threatening arrhythmia that caused his heart to quiver irregularly. 
Despite multiple attempts at defibrillation to restore his heart's normal rhythm, Mr. Johnson's heart could not be stabilized. His organs began to fail, and his blood pressure dropped to dangerously low levels. Dr. Harris and her team were devastated. They had done everything in their power to save Mr. Johnson, but his condition had become critical. The entire medical team continued to work tirelessly, but sadly, Mr. Johnson's heart stopped beating. Despite their best efforts at cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, they were unable to revive him. The entire hospital was in shock. Dr. Harris was heartbroken, as she had formed a close bond with Mr. Johnson during his treatment. She couldn't help but blame herself for the error in administering the high-dose insulin. She reviewed the events in her mind over and over again, trying to understand how the mistake had happened. She realized that it was a combination of the clerical error by the nurse and her own oversight in not thoroughly checking the insulin concentration before administering it. The hospital conducted a thorough investigation into the incident. It was determined that the error occurred when the nurse had prepared the insulin vial for Dr. Harris. Instead of preparing the concentration that Dr. Harris had prescribed, the nurse had inadvertently prepared a vial with a concentration that was 10 times higher. The error had gone unnoticed during the busy morning rush, and Dr. Harris had unknowingly administered the high-dose insulin to Mr. Johnson. Dr. Harris was devastated and took full responsibility for the error. She was heartbroken over the loss of her patient and deeply remorseful for the mistake that had cost a life. She underwent counseling and sought support from her colleagues, who assured her that it was a system error and not solely her fault. Nevertheless, Dr. Harris was haunted by the incident and vowed to be even more vigilant in her practice to prevent such errors from occurring in the future. The tragic incident also led to significant changes in the hospital's protocols and procedures. The importance of thorough verification and cross-checking of medication orders, especially high-risk medications like insulin, was reinforced among the staff. In memory of Mr. Johnson, Dr. Harris also became an advocate for patient safety. The story portrays the devastating consequences of medical errors and the importance of patient safety in healthcare. It highlights the critical nature of medication administration, the need for thorough verification and cross-checking of medication orders, and the importance of clear communication among healthcare team members. The story also underscores the significance of vigilance, attention to detail, and mindfulness in clinical practice to prevent errors and protect patients from harm. Additionally, the story sheds light on the emotional toll that medical errors can have on healthcare providers, emphasizing the need for support systems and counseling to cope with the aftermath of such incidents. It also emphasizes the importance of taking responsibility, learning from mistakes, and using them as opportunities for growth and improvement in clinical practice. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Please support me by hitting that notification bell.